So with just over 3 months left to go until version 3.0 of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is apparently going to bring us some really new and fun and exciting content, and obviously Joker for the first character of the DLC pack, we still have time to go over some stuff that is in the current patch of the game and talk about some things that you may have missed. Now we made a video before and there were some things that were new and some things that lots of you guys already knew, but this time I decided to leave it up to the audience. So in the last video, you guys commented tons of things and I made a list of the top seven most things that I didn't really even know at the time. And these are some really cool, you know, details that you guys pointed out. So for the next video, if you guys want the series to continue going on, comment in this comment section down below all the things that I still have missed or that you think people may miss in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Any details that you guys want to include, put that in the comments down below. And if you guys have not seen the first video, go check that out. And you will surely see some things that I've already covered. If you guys are thinking, uh, I didn't pick yours, I may have already covered it. So if you guys have any more cool and exciting details, put them down in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get started. Ending the last series and starting this one, we have the Pokemon Trainer. And this character can get kind of complicated when you have lots of characters on screen. And what do I mean by this? Well, let's dive in. I used all Pokemon Trainers for this gameplay footage to kind of better show off exactly what happens. Now, when you have four Pokemon Trainers on a stage, it's simple. The Pokemon Trainers, when they're calling a new Pokemon, throws out this beam of light. It goes to the Pokemon and brings in the next one, and it just continues to repeat on a cycle. It's nothing too complicated. The Pokemon Trainers are visible, and they normally pair up two for a platform when it comes to them landing on platforms on certain stages. But, did you know, when there's more than four Pokemon Trainers, like I did in this video, being eight, the Pokemon Trainers are not even visible. Instead, in order for them to be loaded in, they appear to be in the foreground where you can't even see them at all. Where when you transfer Pokemon, the light comes in from the foreground and switches the Pokemon and then goes back. It's kind of a neat little touch that obviously the game couldn't handle that many trainers at once on the screen, because that would be a technical... 16 characters with all the Pokemon and it, their trainers respectively so it's a nice little touch where they had to you know make some adjustments uh, to the actual gameplay itself So everybody knows Sakurai likes to throw in little touches for each and every character, and there's going to be even more examples of this later on in the video. But some touches are absolutely pointless, and it's just like, why? And of course, with King K. Rool, Sakurai had to do this one. So if you know King K. Rool at all, he is just a walking super armor. That's all he is. He's just a tank. Every single time you attack him, whenever he's throwing out attacks or whatever, he always has the upper hand because he is just super armor with legs and arms and, and a crown and, and a gun and a pirate hat and a lot of stuff. But anyways, King K. Rool also has another super armor tactic that you probably didn't even notice on one of his taunts, which to be even more specific, I believe is his up taunt. He grabs his stomach and kind of laughs, but if in the middle of grabbing his stomach, he actually has super armor frames during that taunt. So if you try to hit him, it'll just bounce right off and do absolutely nothing to him as he sits there and laughs and holds his big pot belly in front of you. And you're just sitting there feeling like this character is just stupidly OP. How in the world does he have a super armor on a taunt? Next up we have Simon Belmont with a classic throwback to the old school Castlevania game. So pretty much with his victory animation he has a couple throwbacks. At first he grabs a red crystal or red orb from the game which actually gives him more energy and more power and he grabs the crystal and then the screen pans out to a 2D section where Simon just jumps up and down throwing out his chain attack. Now this is a exact reference to the old school Castlevania games where as you play as Simon Belmont you can jump and use the chain attack and it actually mirrors that almost exactly. And what also is really cool is Simon Belmont is one of the only if not the only character that has a victory animation where he is constantly at motion at the end. Now I know Cloud Stripe has a you know endless song loop but Simon is actually in motion himself throughout the end screen uh, victory animation which is also really cool.
So if you ever played Splatoon, you know when an inkling dies, you hear something along that line, and you see the little ghost of the inkling fly up, similar to how Pikmin die. This happens all the time in Splatoon, but it doesn't happen in Smash Bros, at least what it doesn't seem to happen in many of the KOs. But some special KOs are actually able to trigger that look for the inkling character, and this is how it is done. So pretty much certain characters in the game have special KO powers with their smash attacks if the enemy is over 100% damage. So these characters, or at least some of these characters that include this, is Bayonetta, Ridley, and Zelda. So trying this out on the Inkling, as soon as the Inkling is killed from this special smash attack, you can see the Inkling, you know, kind of spirit, squid, fly up into the air. And this can only be triggered, like I said, for these special star KOs once the Inkling is over 100%. This is a really cool, unique touch from Sakurai, and I actually found it to be pretty unique. These boys just do not like water. So pretty much the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate with stages that contain water, no character in particular can stay afloat longer than any other character. The character will eventually drown if you stay in the water too long. That's just, you know, pretty much the code of the game. But there are some specific characters that actually take damage while being in the water. Not a lot, but they do take damage based on their character attributes themselves. And those characters I have right now for one inkling Obviously, Inklings can't get wet because in the game, if you fall in water, you die. It's weird for the game's theory, but it, that's what happens in the main game. That's what happens in Smash. Charizard, obviously a fire Pokemon, can't get wet. Sonic literally doesn't know how to swim. Any of the games need the TV show spinoffs, anything. Sonic just doesn't know how to swim. And Cineroar, I don't know what, I don't know why Sonic takes damage because he doesn't know how to swim, but he, he takes damage. Uh, and Cineroar, obviously another fire Pokemon takes damage and that's pretty much it for the list of uh, characters that take damage but these this damage is very insignificant and it's just a little easter egg that Sakurai threw in once again to help represent these characters even more. So coming in at number two, we have the a la carte assist trophy on the Wii Fit stage. Now, before we even get into this, there are a lot of assist trophies that just don't work with certain stages. They are either canceled or not allowed to appear on those stages just because of hazards and stuff like that. Um, because one of the examples I found out was the Waluigi on the Metroid, most of the Metroid stages, um, just because they're so crazy and they move and the fire coming in. There's a lot of stuff going on. But with Alucard and the Wii Fit Studio, there's really nothing that should be keeping them out of this one, except for the fact that vampires cannot be seen in mirrors. And considering the fact that Alucard's father is none other than Dracula himself, he cannot be seen in the mirror. That's why you can't even make him appear on the stage, even if you open up the Assist Trophy menu. Pretty cool detail. With The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there were many easter eggs and hidden secrets throughout the entire game, and this carries over to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. As you break the top of the Sheikah Tower, you get a small platform that reads something in Sheikah language, but once translated, since fans have already figured out how to do so, it reads Smash Bros, which is a really neat detail. And even when the teardrop drops in the very background from the Sheikah Tower and into the tablet, it reads loading and saving like it does previous in uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So this is a really cool concept and a really cool thing to bring over that Nintendo just threw in and expected us to find on our own and we dug deep and we found it. And this is a really cool detail. Well thank you guys for tuning in for this second part of the series of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate things that you might have missed. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys have found any of these to be helpful let me know in the comments if you guys have seen any of these I know lots of you will say yes I know all these I understand and if you have known all these just don't spoil it for the people in the comments because not everybody in the world goes throughout Smash Bros detailing everything and they would be very pleasantly surprised to find out some of these things so please be respectful in the comments to people and especially to people who recommend other things and I might actually take the recommendations if they sound pretty good but if you guys have any details that you know that people might have missed put them down in the comments below and you could get mentioned on the very next video your idea could be brought up so let me know what you guys think and i will see you guys on the next one see you guys